you know, something that um, I often think about, especially when it comes to a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world. By the way, welcome back. I know it's been quite some time since I've had the ability to post any of these videos, and it's primarily because I had two strikes and I wasn't allowed to post for quite some time. And then, of course, I had to wait for the strikes to fall off so that just in case for whatever reason YouTube says we don't like something that I said, and then they just end up banning the channel altogether. So uh, a principle that I often like to follow when it comes to the stuff that goes on from day to day, because there's a lot that many people and even many individuals who claim to be Christian get themselves involved with. And one of the things that I remember that the Apostle Peter had talked about when he had said that as Christians, we're naturally more or individuals who want to believe in God, especially if you believe in Christianity, you know, the, the concept was that many of these individuals, because they don't want to get themselves involved with the day to day affairs of what goes on in the world and the immorality that goes on in the world, that there was going to be a level of suffrage that would go on. But one of the things that the Apostle Peter had talked about, he said there were some things that were very obvious that Christians should not get involved when he said, indeed, none of you should suffer as a murderer right, or as a thief or as a wrongdoer. And those are things that for most people comes to mind very naturally. It's not within our benefit or in the benefit of our neighbors, obviously for us, obviously for us to commit murder to steal from people or to commit things that in terms of society would think of as acts of wrongdoing. But then he goes on to say, or even as a meddler and the Greek word that was utilized refers to overseeing others affairs. And so it brings to mind someone who's a busybody. They're very nosy. They're always involved with the things that are going on in other people's lives that have, that have no effect on them in any way, shape, or form. One of these things that you see very much so is the whole thing with trans and the male swimmers or the individuals who were males and not males now. And it's like none of that stuff has any real impact into my life. There's no reason for me to get involved in much of those situations. Now, for many of the young people who are students and they're deeply embedded and they're deeply involved in, you know, collegiate affairs or things that are going on at school for swim meets or basketball or whatever it is, when you get deeply involved in the things that belong to the system of things, well, then naturally you're going to feel some type of way if for some reason or another you become excluded or you become hated for X, Y, and Z. But if your goal is to just utilize the system for what it is, I mean, I can't, you know, I go to the hospital and I was like, you guys are still wearing masks up until this point. And they're just like, yeah, they haven't stated whether or not. And all I could sit here and fight and complain about like, masks, it don't work, sit here, pull out every single study from a uh, uh, academic standpoint, it's not really going to do anything. It's not going to be of any benefit for me. So sure, can wear the mask, not a problem. Pull from the system what I need and then build the life that I want for myself and encourage my friends and family to do the same. Whether they choose to is a completely different scenario. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to impact me in any way, shape, or form to the extent that I allow it to. And many people get balled out, oh, YouTube censoring and Twitter is censoring and I got banned for, for saying X, Y, and Z on Twitter and this is stupid. And it's just like, if you don't like it, get off the platform. If you don't like the censoring on YouTube, then get off of YouTube. If you don't like the censoring on Twitter, get off of Twitter. But the problem is, is that that's not really the case. They want the attention. That's the problem. They want to meddle in other people's lives. They see these other individuals. It's just like, for example, with the, with the whole 19 thing and how other states were heavily impacted by what was going on. And then individuals, especially individuals who are on the right that claim to be, you know, Christians, they're meddling in their affairs. And I'm like, it doesn't affect you. Who cares if you're living in Alabama, Virginia, Florida, who cares what's going on in Florida? It doesn't impact you. So why become a meddler in their life? Why give all your attention and energy posting on social media? It's primarily because people want the attention. And 
the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter said, well, that's not really what we should be involved with. And of course, for many people who do get involved in this, it does lead to quote unquote suffering. They would sit here and they cry on social media. Oh, I got banned and I got timed down and I took a week suspension and Twitter gave me a strike. And it's just like, or YouTube gave me a strike or I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, well, you, because you want to become dependent upon the system. It's just like parents who complain about CRT or they don't like or appreciate the education that their kids are getting. And it's like, well, why don't you work? You had several years where you saw what was going on in the schools. You saw the mask and the, the forcing kids to stay at home. And it's like, well, why haven't you prepared to educate your children at home? Why have If you don't like that your job forces you to do X, Y, or Z, why haven't you taken the time to change your lifestyle, maybe reduce your expenses, or create a, create a side hustle, start your own business so that you become your own boss, so that the meddlings of the state in your life become minimized. But many people don't want to do that. They want the comfort of being cradled by the system of things, and they don't want the system of things to encroach upon their lives. And that's not how that works. It's just like Jesus said, you can't slave for two masters. Either you belong to the state and you're going to be a slave to the state or you're going to do your own thing and minimize your interactions with the things that are going on within specific societies. If you have to be at a certain job, I'm just there. I, have got, I keep my head down and I keep it moving and, as, so I can pursue these other things that are more important to me. And that's, that's what I do. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I see going on at the hospital and I could always be that person interjecting left and right into all the different affairs of, well, did you do any information? Did you do telling patients? Did you do any studying on X, Y, and Z medications and how they're going to impact your life? And did you, have you been paying attention to this or that? And it's like, if you're already foolishly have allowed yourself to depend on the state for your health care, well, then you're already knee deep in the waters. And I'm not going to be that much benefit to you. And the only thing that ends up happening is I end up sacrificing myself. And that person may go off and still do the things that are bad for their health. And it hasn't benefited me in any way, shape, or form. I've just basically thrown myself to the wayside just to meddle in someone else's affairs and someone else's life. And, of course, we try to do the best that we can. But there's plenty of times where I'm like, are you sure that's what you want to do? And they're like, oh. They haven't done any research. It is coming completely dependent upon the hospital, completely dependent upon the doctors, completely dependent upon the state, realizing that the state lies to you and uses you and only works for its benefit. And if you put yourself in line where you're completely dependent upon the system of things, well, you can't you have no one else to blame except for you for the predicament that you're in you should be actively working to benefit yourself to remove yourself from certain areas where you feel you're being forced to meddle in other people's lives. This whole thing with the transgender and the swimmers and stealing scholarships, and it's like, this is what you voted for. When the men, probably came before me, were like, they think this is a bad idea, and then the women turned around and tried to cancel them, it was like, hey, you reap what you sow. You made your bed, now go lie in it. Don't ask me to get involved. When years ago, men spoke up and tried to warn you about what was going to happen and this is this is the the outcome and this is why i've always said if you for a lot of young men you should be working hard creating wealth within your life and then extracting yourself from this system of things and maybe moving into a second or third world country where you're looking to have or you can have the ability to have a family and to go, move into patriarchal societies where you can live the life that it will be more beneficial to you if your goal is to have a family but many young men don't want to do that they love the luxuries of the internet fast internet and having all these luxuries of life and it's like well if you're dependent upon the system you can't complain this is basically what you get anyway i'm gonna leave that there appreciate you watching and i'll catch you next time